So I showed this inheritance chain in a previous video. I have multicast delegate and delegate and then your actual delegate type that, that uh, you create right here. So the compiler sets this up. Multi me delegate inherits from multicast delegate, which inherits from delegate. And initially this may seem confusing. Why do we have the two? One, why is one named multicast versus delegate? I mean, I kind of understand that this is more specific than the base type, so so we get a more specific name. But then again, why do we... I don't even have the two, and really this go. This is a historic thing that uh, happened way back in the early days of the creation of .NET. The uh, people on the committee or whoever sat sat around decided that if a delegate, the 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 first argument was if a delegate returns void, then it can be a multicast delegate. But if it returns anything else but void, then it's going to be a normal delegate. And multicast basically means you can chain. You can create chains, as I showed you in the previous video, All right? But in the end, they just changed it and said, you know what? All delegates are going to be multicast, which is okay, except now we have multicast and delegate. We, they could have just combined these into one uh, delegate type, but maybe they liked the separation. Who knows? Maybe they were thinking in the future, what if they wanted to change something else or they needed the two? I don't know what their reasoning was, but we really, as it stands right now and as, as it has stand, stood for the last decade, we don't need... Uh, two delegate types. So we have them. So whatever. Let me show you. I'm going to make a method here. Static int return 5. Alright. This is going to be one of the most exciting methods you've seen. So we got return 5. Let's do return 10. This one will return 10. And notice here, me delegate, I'm going to change it and say instead of returning void, Let's return an int. And then we're going to say me delegate D gets return 5. And then let's add on return uh, 10. Okay. And then I'm going to say console. Well, let's just keep this simple. Int value gets D. Console right line value. So pause the video and think, what's going to be returned? What's what's going to print to the console here? Is it going to be 5? Is it going to be 10? All of a sudden I have two methods now that are chained together in a delegate. And I can't, I, I, got, I can only return one value. I can't return two. All right? It says only one int. That's not int array. It's int. Okay? So pause the video think, okay, I'm going to run this. And the output is 10. So the rule is basically the last delegate in the chain is the return, the, the one that gets returned. Okay, so that's what we have here. You know, and I, I would kind of understand why they wouldn't want us to chain. I mean, if we go back to their original reasoning, I'm guessing since we have int return types here, if we inherited delegate, we wouldn't be able to chain. That is, we couldn't have more than one method in our delegate chain. But they eventually relaxed the rules and said, you know what, go ahead, we'll just return the last value. Well, what if you had some obscure case where you did want to get all the return values back? Well, I showed you in a previous video that get implication list uh, method. We can actually use that to do our dirty work for us. So I'm going to say, uh, let's make a list of int. Int gets new list of int. And I'm going to say for each... Uh, int i, not int i, sorry, me delegate, uh, del, and d, give me your invocation list, ints dot add del. So now I'm going to go one by one through all the methods in the chain. I'm going to invoke all those methods one by one via this delegate. And I'm going to add the return type in ints. So now I can down here I can say for each Int, oops, let's, let's do it properly. Int i and ints. Console right line i. And let's make this more interesting. Let's do return 10, return 5. Let's return 22. You know, ideally, <laughs> ideally, uh, the, the, these wouldn't be contrived examples, but they are, so whatever. 22, uh, let's do t plus equals return 10 plus return uh, 22. I think that should work. Yeah. Oh no, that's that's not going to work because it's saying, uh, oh, it's a long story why it won't work. I don't, don't want to talk about it now, but let's go d plus equals return 22. Okay, that should work. All right, I'm going to run this. There we go. 5, 10, 22. So indeed, one by one, we went through our list, 
uh, we invoked each one one by one and and store the result. In fact, I can even trace through this using the, the debugger. I'm going to add the invocation of Dell. Notice Dell is just running return 5 and only return 5. And then we're going to go to the next one in the list and run return 10 and only return 10. And then go through the next one in the list and return 22. Okay. We can actually abstract this out a little bit and uh, put this in a function that we could reuse. So static list. And I'm going to go generic here. List uh, get all return values. Uh, actually, I guess it's an int since we're going to use me delegate. So let's just, instead of being fancy, let's just go int. Uh, me delegate. Uh, del, or no, I didn't call it, I called it D, let's call it D, and then I'm going to cut this, let's move this code down to here, and then return ints. So that's kind of nice, I have a nice uh, function I can pass in, any de or at least a me delegate to, and um, get all the return values, so let's, let's put that right here, I'm going to call it right here, and pass D, and get the same result as we did before, 5, 10, 22. Okay. In the next video, I'll show you how to generify this a little bit, um, just so we don't, we're not stuck to me delegate or stuck to ints. We can, we can make it a little bit more abstract using generic.